We have made it all the way through until March. We have gone through a January transfer window that was very uneventful, shall we say. We've done one bit of business. It was selling a player. We'll talk to talk about him in just a second. We've obviously played a lot of football. I say a lot. We've played some football. There was a weird winter break, um, which lasted all the way through January and a bit of February as well. So, yeah, basically... Um, we have, where were we? Where did we finish off? I think we finished off with the Osijek game. So we went on and beat Lugano. We beat Lusanne. We lost against Savet. Not ideal. Returning in February, we beat Young Boys, Vadas. You losing against Lausanne, beating Basel, which is huge. A draw against St. Gallen as well, which is not ideal. Today, we're going to be playing against Marseille in the Europa Cup. Europa Cup? My brain's, that's the Europa League, isn't it? My brain's thinking we're in the Europa Conference League. That's the Dover save. If you haven't seen that, go check that one out. There's going to be 16 seasons in that. We are currently sat second place in the table with a game in hand over third place, but Luzerne also have a game in hand over third place. We are not likely to overtake Basel anytime soon, but we are still within a fighting chance in this competition, which is good. I was worried that we weren't going to have a particularly good season. The concern here, though... Luzerne have kind of closed the gap, so it's now a four-horse race for the title. Transfer business then. Marin Haile Selassie has left the club, signing for Luzerne for about £28,000. We, we just weren't playing him. That's pretty much it. No, no, it's not it. Ivan Saponjic has also left the club on a permanent deal. I mean, I think we're still paying some of his wages. It's a bit of a mess. I don't... Or maybe we're not, actually. We, maybe we're not paying his wages. He's left. He's gone to Zelenia on a free transfer. He, he was he was a mistake, okay? He was a mistake. We never played him. He didn't really play well when we did play him. He was a mistake, and now he's gone. So then the Europa League first knockout round, or no, technically second knockout round, because we won the group, we go straight into the second stage. I, it's Basically, Europe confuses me. I'm a Southampton fan. We don't get there. I don't know how Europe works. I've never really cared for the Champions League, Europa League, or UEFA Cup, or whatever it was back in the day. So yeah, I don't understand Europe. Elsewhere in Europe, Basel have just drawn 1-1 with Newcastle and Doyen and Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain scoring for Newcastle. So Basel are still in the competition and that is some more coefficient points, which might just be enough to tip us over the edge into making an improvement on the season that we are going to lose. Half an hour played and very little is going on here in France. We've had no highlights whatsoever. It's obviously nil-nil. We've had five shots apparently, but we've not seen a single highlight and that's half time. Cool. Literally, the only thing of note to happen is Herc has picked up a yellow card. Um, I'm going to say I'm not happy because I want to see something. This makes for a very interesting YouTube video if things go on. If nothing happens, it's quite boring and quite short. We're over an hour in and still nothing. We're going to do a double change. We're going to take off Herc for Toma? I think. No, we don't. It's Eddie. It's Eddie's time. Eddie's coming in. He's actually... Hold on. He's actually now... A central midfielder of sorts. This is good. We're making some progress. Eddie Salcedo is going to come on as the box to box. We're also going to take off Rafia for Han. I think that's all we're going to do at the moment. I want some highlights. Here is a highlight, but it's a Marseille highlight, which is not what we're after. Ichikawa has somehow cleared that off the line. I don't know how he did that. It didn't go in, so I'm happy that he did that, but I'm not quite sure the physics behind what went on there. 15 minutes left to play, and it looks like the match might be coming alive. Romagna back to Bazunu. Romagna, by the way, is leaving the club at the end of the season on a free transfer. Signing for Trabs on Spore. Arcadius Milik almost puts the ball past Bazunu, but tucks it wide. Romagna is leaving. It's a tactical decision to make him leave the club. Han has the ball for us. 79th minute. Crosses it in. It's towards Sané. He doesn't bother jumping. Ishikawa collects it. In the middle is Eddie Salcino, the greatest box-to-box -box midfielder the world has ever seen. And Romagna's decided to go all the way back to Gavin Bazunu. It's a first-time kick up field from the Irish international to find Ishikawa. Sene tries to find Han. It's a poor pass. And now the counter-attack is possibly on. How have we not got the ball there? We were literally... What are we doing? If they score from this, that's ridiculous. That is the worst defending I've ever seen in Football Manager. Romagna could have got the ball about four times there and just didn't bother. Well, we've gone from having no highlights to in the final 15 minutes of the game, everything seems to be happening. But annoyingly, everything seems to be happening for Marseille, which is not what we're after. I think as well, if we lose this, this is our European season finished. Bazunu with the ball to Romagna. Romagna, now that he signed a contract with Trabzon Spor in the summer, he's given up. Although he's on a 7.0. I don't know how or why. Ishikawa's getting a second yellow card. I think that's our third red card in three games on camera now. 
We've just been pretty poor, haven't we? We've just been pretty poor in this game. We are going to do this. It's, it's a weird thing to do. We're going to drop Brenner because Brenner's playing poorly. Schmidt is going to come on as a left back. And we are just going to try and not lose any more than 1-0. It's a throw. Final 10 minutes or final 6 minutes now of the game. Schmidt potentially has given away a penalty. What is going on with our defence at the moment? Marseille with the ball through. Schmidt just gets it in front of Bazunu for some reason. And it is still Marseille with the ball. Pelmard, who we know quite a lot about because he's played for Basel for the past four seasons. On the right-hand side is Mukiele. Could be his name. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's crossed in. Back post is Nemanja. And it is 2-0 to Marseille. It's game over. That red card has killed it. There's still chances for a third. Or maybe, maybe a consolation. It's not going to be a consolation, is it? It's going to be a third. Bresianini with a head forward finds only Kalasanic. It's forward Nemanja, who's now on a hat-trick. I think it's a curling effort. And if that went in... That would have been a good way to finish it. Berg with a free kick for Marseille. Milik heads down. Pelmard's there. He's rattled the bar. Sene passed it calmly back to Bazuni, who volleyed it off. And that is full time. And we were rubbish. We were absolutely rubbish for 70 minutes of the game. So were Marseille. And then everything kind of livened up. The red card broke it for us, really. I'm far from pleased. It was a poor performance. Nobody really comes out of that with a good rating, apart from Romagna. And I definitely blame him for their first goal. Or was it their second goal? I don't know. I blame him for one of their goals. So Ichikawa is going to be banned for one game. It looks like Herc as well is also going to be banned for the next game against Marseille. We're going to go forward to play Winterthur, which is a game there we should win that one. And we'll come back in just a second for the second leg against Marseille. If that one, not a lot happens, we might also play Lugano as well in the league. We have just played the Winterthur game and good news Kind of. We have dropped down to third, which doesn't sound like good news, but that's because St. Gallen have beaten the zone 5-1. The good news is Basel have dropped points against Lugano, which means there is only two points between us and top of the table. St. Gallen have played a game more than us, so I'm not too concerned about them at the moment. It's it's very tight at the top of the table. Luzerne, obviously losing against St. Gallen as well, makes them fall away a little bit. They're still in there, but hopefully... That's not for too long. Let's go forward. Let's play Marseille for a second time. And it might be the end of our season when it comes to Europe. The return leg then against Marseille. That is our starting 11. Obviously, we've got a couple of suspensions. So Schmid comes in for Ichikawa on that left-hand side in defence. Marseille are good, aren't they? Marseille are actually very good. Milik, Marshall, De La Fuente is a very good front three. 12 and a bit minutes on the clock. And we finally got a highlight. I say finally. We've actually gotten a highlight in the first half. Which is surprising, because last match, obviously, we got nothing in the first half. Sene's going to collect this on that left-hand side. Two, maybe three in the box. It's a poor pass from Sene. Why is Sene doing passes like that at the moment? Maman has collected this. Ball forward, Bresianini to Toma, who's also playing today instead of Herc because of his suspension. Sene's going to collect that. Needs an option in the middle. Brenner is one of them. Schmid's another on the outside. And Dominic Schmid's effort goes just wide of the keeper's post. We are looking bright at the moment. De La Fuente's corner for Marseille comes in. It's... It, I'm... I, I'm not... I, I don't... I don't think that went in. I'm just saying. Schmid's up literally on the line and it hits him. Watch him. That's that's not a goal. That hit Schmid in the face and he was on the line. Do we not have VAR in the Europa League? Is this a thing that we've decided against doing? Mamana with the ball for us. We have now got a mountain to climb. Three goals to try and claw back. And our passing is poor. Conrad De La Fuente is going to collect that. Goes for a long range effort. It's over the bar of Gavin Bazunu. Speaking of Gavin Bazunu, we did have an offer in between the two Marseille matches for Bazunu from Al Saad from, I want to say, Saudi Arabia for five and a half million pounds. And we rejected it because he's going to be my number one goalkeeper until the end of this series. That's the plan. Romagna to Toma. Ball towards Sene on that left-hand side. He's, I was going to say he's been tackled. He's not been tackled. He's going to go it alone. He's managed to pass the ball to Diakabi. What is... Sene's having a shocking game at the moment, isn't he? He's on a 6-6. I, I say he's on a 5 at this point. He's done nothing good. He's had a lot of the ball, and he's ran it into, into corners and passed it to someone else. Denier plays it back to Lopez. Pelmard... It is Marseille coming forward. I feel like we've got a goal in us. We've definitely got a goal in us in this game. Maybe we need to try and play for coefficients. Pusic collects on the right-hand side. Brenner's in the middle. Brenner is there. Gets his 30-second goal of the season. It is 1-1 on the night. 
coefficient points. That's what we need to keep an eye on. If we can score two more as well, that will be very helpful. Free kick for Schmid to Toma. Bresianini with some space. Ball forward to Pusic. Are we going to make it 2-1 just before half-time? Rafia to Pusic. Aragoni with some space. Brenner's offside. Instead, he's come back on. It's a penalty. Kalasinic trips Aragoni. It is going to be a penalty. I don't know if we've got a good penalty taker. I assume Brenner is going to be the man to do it. Is he good at it, though? That's the question. It is Brenner stepping up. The Brazilian striker signed from Cincinnati in the summer. Where are you going to go? I feel like he's going to miss. He's not missed. It is 2-1 to Grasshoppers. 3-2 to Marseille overall. His 33rd goal of the season for Brenner. That's silly, isn't it? That is silly amounts of goals. And half-time, then. We have the lead. It's not looking the most comfortable, but we do have the lead. Pusic and Brenner being the standout performers so far. Straight into the second half, no changes. I'm looking at fitness, really. Rafia is probably the man to come off. He's also not playing very well either. We're already on the 65th minute. Nothing is happening in the second half. So Rafia is coming off for Han. We're also going to do Sene coming off for Salcedo. Sure, Eddie, you can play on the left wing today. Schmid's having a shocker, but I guess that's because he's been blamed for their goal. We're just going to do that. There is no Musa Genepo, by the way, because he is fit, but he's he basically he sort of plays. We alternate games between Sene and Genepo. So Genepo played the league game. We're into the final 10 minutes. We need to find a goal. We need to find a goal. We don't really have any subs left to go either. We've got one technically, but I don't think it's going to make too much difference because Brenner is the only one you'd want to change. And he loves scoring hat-tricks. Brenner, get that ball. Brenner, get that ball. Oh my word. Brenner has just scored a hat-trick. 85 and a half minutes played. It's 3-3. It's going to go to extra time. Right, let's do a sub. Our final one. It is going to be Pusic coming off for Okafor. Luis Semedo, by the way, is a player who we signed a couple of seasons ago. Sent him out on loan. Um, he was sat in my under-21s. And I could, reg I could register him. There was no... Like, I didn't need to have him sort of registered in the official sense. So we thought we'd just stick him in the first team. We've got four minutes of injury time. And is this going to be a chance for a potential winner? Toma to Salcedo, back to Toma. Schmid's making a run. Toma does use him as well. Can he redeem himself? He's on a 7.0, so he has redeemed himself already. Schmid with a ball, crosses it in hands there. It's hit the post. Eddie Salcedo. Oh my word, what's happened? That goalkeeper, who's on a 6.3, has just saved the day there. It has gone to extra time. That could have been the winner. That was so close. We could have won the game there. Right, do we get any more substitutions to do? Aragoni is shattered. Toma, Bresianini both shattered as well. I think we're going to take Toma off. And what do we do here? I mean, we know we can do that. That's an option. We know that's an option. And we still don't really... I mean, we're going to have to do that, aren't we? Our attacking midfield is questionable. Samido, Okafor and Han. And then obviously Eddie Salcedo's dropped to be the box-to-box -box midfielder. This, it's all we can really do at this point. It's just fitness. Both teams are going to be struggling. Bazunu to Mamana. Three minutes into extra time. Mamana back to Bazunu. The only yellow card as well for Mamana. That's good. I was expecting to see like five or six people on the yellows, but it's not. Aragoni doesn't have much energy left in him. He's got an option in front. He's going to use all of his energy. Luis? Luis Hemir? I mean, that's Samedo, isn't it? Why is he called Luis Hemir? That's confused me. This is literally his debut. That's why I'm confused by what's going on. Schmid with a corner for us. Crosses it in. It was towards Mamana and it's cleared. Bresianini's going to hopefully keep this one alive. Schmid needs it back and gets it back, but the highlight ends. Aragoni to Mamana. Back to Aragoni. Bresianini trying to pass her way through and Semedo's pass is not the best. And now Marseille can possibly come forward. Nemanja, who was a nightmare against us in France, and he's done it again. Nemanja Radonic makes it 3-2 on the night, 4-3 to Marseille overall. We now need to get one more goal. I've just realised we're playing attacking. Maybe that was the problem. We shouldn't be playing attacking because they're obviously going to be trying to come forward as well. Berg with the ball. Hand steals it away. Can't steal it away enough. Maybe he can. Hands nicked it. Semedo, loads of space to run into for the young Portuguese striker slash winger. Goes off towards the right-hand side. Brenner's in the box. Plays it to Han. Han's effort is blasted into the back of the net. It is 4-2. 4-4 on aggregate. This tie is not over. Half-time in extra time. 4-2. 4-4. That hand goal has kept us in this match. I say this match in this tie. We have been the much better side. We just need to find that 
fifth goal now. I was going to say the winner. We're already technically winning. We need to find that fifth goal. Mamana to Bresciannini to Romagna. Salcedo, the box to box. Schmid, Okafor on the left towards Brenner. It's not the best pass. And now Marseille can hold on to the ball. I imagine they're going to want to just try and nick a counter-attack. Because we're at home. We are the home side here. We should be able to take advantage of that. Pelmard is going for a very long run. Caledio could be his name. Not quite sure. Long ball forward. Nemanja's in on goal again. Bazunu, what are you doing? What a block that is from Mamana. Mamana has just saved the day, much like their goalkeeper did right before the full-time whistle went. It is going to be a corner. Berg is the man. Right-footed towards the front post. Big Gavin Bazunu holds on to that one, and it remains 4-2. Marseille are coming forward. They are coming forward with a lot of... The ball's going off, Schmid. The ball was going off. Have we just given away a penalty? Has Schmid just given away a penalty in the uh, 19th, 113th minute? He has. He's actually given away a penalty. Come on, Gavin. Come on, Gavin. You can do this. Who's the man stepping up? Is it Nemanja? It's not. It's Arcadius Milik. Bazunu goes the right way and it still manages to find the back of the net. And Marseille take the lead and the tie once again. We've pushed to attacking. Is it going to make a difference? We've got a corner. Schmid, who conceded the penalty, still on a 7-8 somehow. Luis Semedo's there. Brenner's there. It's 5-5 on aggregate. 5-3 on the night. Brenner's got four of them. How is this happening? What is going on? Us in Europe is a nightmare, isn't it? The 8-2 against Celtic. 5-3 here against Marseille. This, it's, this is insane. And we're still not done. We are still not done. Han, back to Aragoni. Ball forward. Finds Han once again. Down the line is Semedo. Poor pass from Semedo. What were you doing? And now Nemanja's in on goal. He goes for a long-range effort. Blasts it past Gavin Bazunu. It's 6-5. There's still time. We've still got 45 seconds. We can score four in that. That absolutely sucks. Absolutely sucks. Their winner was a misplaced pass. That was it. It was just a misplaced pass. We win on the night. Coefficients. I guess that's one silver lining we get some coefficients. We score four goals from Brenner because, of course, we do. But we are out of the Europa League. I don't think we dropped down into the Europa Conference either. And because of all the excitement that was going on here, we did not see what happened with our our Swiss um, team. I say teammates. They're not teammates at all. Basel beats Newcastle. So, from a coefficient perspective, that's massive. Two wins and a draw from the second knockout round surely means we have improved on the rating that we're going to lose at the end of the season. So there you see us sat in 11th place, and that is a massive improvement going from a 6-4 to an 8.0. Are we going up? We're going up to 9th. We are actually going up to 9th in the table, which means the winner of the league will go straight into the Champions League group stages. If it stays that way, straight into the Champions League group stages... Somebody then has to go through one qualifier. So second place will go through the final qualifying round. Someone almost gets into the Europa League. Two teams need to go for the Europa League two qualifiers. That is massive. That is absolutely massive. Now, I was going to show you the next match against Lugano, but I've changed my mind. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the transfers that are going to take place in the summer because I have lined up a lot of transfers for the summer. First of all, you can see there Romagna leaving, going to Trabs on Sport. We have mentioned that, but there are five players coming in in the summer. Some of them are pretty tasty. In defence, we are signing two central defenders. Perchers coming in from Ajax, 25 years of age, free transfer. He's not superb, but I think he's certainly going to be a very good addition to our team. Plus, he is from the EU, which is always helpful. Also joining in the summer on a free transfer is Liam Scales, a player who was involved and I think he might have even scored in the 8-2 mess that we were involved in. He has decided he wants to try and fix that and not concede eight goals against Celtic. So he is coming over to Switzerland, which I think is a very good signing as well. Moving further forward, three midfielders, which might be too many. Moises Caicedo, Caicedo, not quite sure, from Brighton. Bringing him in because I know he's got some potential. He's got a lot of potential in him. And if we can just get a couple of seasons out of him, shift him on for a decent fee... A free transfer for a 23-year-old is good business, if you ask me. And a similar situation for Alexandre Jankovic, formerly of Southampton, and Savet and St. Gallen, currently at Young Boys. He infamously 
um, played in the Southampton's 9-0 defeat against Man United and got sent off in that one. So, uh, yeah, he's he's coming in, mainly because he's Swiss, but also because there is some potential there. I'm not sure whether he's going to be a superstar, but there is potential. And again, if we can get some game time out of him, get him some improvements, maybe sell him on. Keep him in Switzerland, that's the goal. And the big one, which doesn't sound big on paper, is Philip Billing. Now, he is 28, will be 29 when he joins, but he is going to be a superb box-to-box -box midfielder. I know we've got Eddie Salcedo, but Billing is going to do that job like an absolute hero, in my opinion. He might be able to play as the ball winner, but he's only got 11 tackling, so I'm not quite sure on that. He's also flipping huge. He's six foot five. He's got 17 long throws. Could we utilise that Rory Delap style? I don't know, but Billing is joining, and this is the one I'm most excited about because I think Billing is going to basically, he's the experience, he's the rock in the middle of the pitch that I think we've missed for the last few seasons. We keep rotating central midfielders. If we can keep billing for two or three seasons, he's going to be great for us. So that is going to be our summer business, but there is most likely going to be more as well. You can see we've already got six million in the bank to spend. So there is money to, to throw around at people. We I basically tried to not spend any money in January because of the registration rules in Switzerland. It's not recommended to spend money in January because you bring players in and they can't play for you. So I've basically decided January transfer windows, they're null and void for me in Switzerland. That is going to do it for this episode. Next episode, I think what we are going to do is we are going to go to here. We're going to go to the Young Boys game and the Basel game because we always play Young Boys and Basel on camera, but we need to be winning those games, don't we? We are currently third in the table. Luzerne is also an interesting one. Let's see, when are we playing Luzerne? Luzerne, we're playing them very, very soon. Savet down in ninth, not that great. It's it might the next few episodes might be all over the place. I might do the Luzerne game and then come back for the Basel game. Who knows is what I'm trying to say. Thank you very much for watching this one. It was certainly was exciting. The good news is coefficients are on the up. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll be back next time with more grasshoppers. Thanks for watching.